reading this book felt like cheating. Okay, I needed this book. I have read so many average books this year and I needed some John Gwynn in my life. It's time to talk about one of my most anticipated, if not my most anticipated book of the year, and that is The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. I don't have a physical copy of The Hunger of the Gods yet, so I'll be holding up this book. I forgot to mention that this will be spoiler free, but I will mention some character names from the first book. So if you consider that a spoiler, then please click away now. I have read all of Gwyn's published books and I was ecstatic to be able to read this book early. So thank you, Orbit. The Hunger of the Gods is the second book in the Bloodsworn Svaga, which is a Norse inspired fantasy trilogy. I loved The Shadow of the Gods and gave it 4.5 stars. I thought it was brilliant. It had great characters epic world building and an interesting plot. Moreover, I have to talk about the cover art for this series. It's definitely one of my favorite out there. Just look how epic this is. Before I start reviewing this book, I have to mention that this book includes a detailed story so far section, a glossary and a character list. I'm so glad to see more books including a recap in their sequels because it can be incredibly challenging to remember all the different plot, plot lines, character names and etc. I was actually planning on rereading The Shadow of the Gods before picking up uh, The Hunger of the Gods, but that was not necessary due to a recap being included in The Hunger of the Gods, so thank you Orbit. So did this book live up to the hype? Well, let's talk about it. Oh, before I forget, I actually changed how my shelves look now. What do you think about this setup? I now have a dedicated Cosmere shelf on the top, and at the bottom shelf I have Brian Stavely, Joe Abercrombie, John Gwynn, and this beautiful Dune cover. What do you think about this setup? All right, back to the video. Firstly, let's talk about if this series feels Norse. If you didn't know, then I'm from the Faroe Islands, which is a tiny Nordic country. I've grown up hearing about Faroese folklore and I can speak Faroese and Danish. So, did this book feel Norse inspired? Absolutely. This series continuously integrates Norse inspired elements such as lore, legends, and even uses Norse languages, which makes this book really feel like a Norse epic fantasy. All the spells are spoken in a language that sounds very familiar to my mother tongue, fairies. I'm guessing it's Icelandic, but I couldn't say for certain. However, the use of language definitely added another layer of enjoyment to this book that most readers will unfortunately not be able to experience. It almost felt like cheating, understanding what they were saying whenever they said a spell, because I was able to understand the meaning behind the spells by just reading the text. However, you don't need to learn Icelandic or fairies to enjoy the book. Quinn always explains what the spells mean or shows their effects, but it definitely enhanced my experience knowing exactly what all the spells said. So yes, this book definitely feels Norse inspired. So, it's approved. Now let's talk about this book. I'm really pleased to say that The Hunger of the Gods is definitely one of my favorite reads of 2022. There are so many things that made this such a memorable and enjoyable read. Firstly, I felt much more invested in the characters in this book. This book follows Orca, Elvar and Varg, who we got introduced to in the first book, and we see how they react to the events of the first book. Consequently, Gwyn has added two additional POEs, and I enjoyed following every POE in this book, which is really rare. I remember that I didn't feel as invested in Elvar's plotline in the first book, but that was not a problem in The Hunger of the Gods. All the characters, and even the side characters, are complex and compelling. Even the new POVs were enjoyable to follow and helped add higher stakes and depth to the world of Vickery. I also need to talk about Orca. In my review for The Shadow of the Gods, I mentioned that Orca had the potential to become one of my all-time favorite characters, and I can firmly say that she has entered my Hall of Fame. Orca continues to be fierce, compassionate, compelling, and complex. Orca's sheer will and determination to fight for her loved ones is awe-inspiring. Fancy books need to have more badass mothers. I love, love, love Orca. Fun fact, Orca or Oshka, how we say it in Faroe Islands, actually means energy. A lot of the names that John Gwynn uses are names that are really common where I'm from, so I just love that. As always, John Gwynn is able to write some of the most vivid and thrilling action sequences. The battles are epic, cinematic, intense and riveting. There are few authors that are able to write such great action scenes as Quinn, and that is high praise coming from a reader who rarely enjoys battle scenes in their fancy books. Consequently, the themes of loyalty, sheer will, morality, family, courage and leadership are at the forefront in this book, and you know I love when a fancy book has great themes. John Gwynn has improved on 
everything that made the Shadow of the Gods great. The stakes are higher, the characters are more compelling, and the world is fleshed out more. However, this book does feel like a middle book in some ways. There is a lot of traveling in this book, which does slow the pace of the story down a bit. However, the conclusion is incredible and heartbreaking. The ending gave me actually similar vibes as to Ruin, which is the third book in the Faithful and the Fallen series. It is worth reading this book just to experience the last chapters of this book. Even though this book does have some slight pacing issues, Gwyn was able to make me enjoy and feel invested in the story throughout this 600 plus page tomb. Unfortunately, I have read a lot of average books this year, so maybe having a difficult reading year made reading this book so much better. I can imagine that my rating might lower the more I think about this book. However, I am giving this book 5 stars since I enjoyed every page of it. The Bloodborne Saga is quickly becoming one of my all-time favorite series. John Quinn has once again been able to craft a cinematic, epic and compelling fantasy story and I can't wait for book 3. I'm giving this book a well-deserved 5 stars and I would highly recommend reading the series if you haven't already. Are you excited for this book? Have you read any of Quinn's other books? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. <laughs>